Welcome to the Peptide Podcast. Today, we're going to talk about what happens when switching from semaglutide to terzepatide. So someone might switch from semaglutide to terzepatide to achieve greater weight loss or just improve their overall blood sugar. Terzepatide has been shown to be more effective for some people because it works on two different hormones, GLP-1 and GIP. This combination can lead to better results in managing weight and overall health. Additionally, if a person stops losing weight on semaglutide or isn't feeling as much appetite suppression, switching to terzepatide could provide a new option, especially at higher doses. Today, we're going to talk about the feedback from doctors and patients about switching from semaglutide to terzepatide for weight loss. The experiences shared are quite varied, but there are common themes based on what healthcare providers and patients reported. When it comes to appetite suppression... According to patients' experiences, some patients report weaker appetite suppression with terzepatide compared to semaglutide. They mentioned that they felt more consistently full or experienced less food noise with semaglutide. Others find terzepatide equally or more effective at reducing hunger, especially at higher doses like 10 milligrams to 15 milligrams weekly. They did note that their overall appetite was well controlled after titrating to these higher doses on terzepatide. What clinicians observed was that terzepatide's appetite suppression is dose dependent. So with lower doses, such as 2.5 or 5 milligrams, sometimes are less effective than semaglutide 2.4, but the higher doses of terzepatide, such as 7.5 milligrams and up, provide stronger suppression. Some clinics report that patients may need more time on terzepatide for the full appetite suppressing effects to become noticeable. When it comes to weight loss, patients experience greater or more rapid weight loss with terzepatide, especially when titrated to higher doses, like 10 milligrams or more. Now, some report that they plateaued with semaglutide, but started losing more weight after switching to terzepatide, while others find that their weight loss slows down after switching to terzepatide, particularly if their terzepatide dose starts low, either 2.5 or 5 milligrams, which then it may take time to match the effect of the semaglutide 2.4. What clinicians have observed is that they report terzepatide tends to lead to greater weight loss overall compared to semaglutide, especially when patients reach the higher doses at 15 milligrams. However, individual variability plays a really significant role with some patients responding better to one medication over the other, just depending on their metabolic profile and personal response to these different medications. When it comes to side effects, patients commonly note that terzepatide side effects are similar to semaglutide, particularly stomach-related symptoms like nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea. However, these effects tend to lessen over time with both medications. On the other hand, some patients do experience more intense side effects with terzepatide, especially during the titration phases of the medication. What clinicians observe is generally they find that terzepatide's tolerability improves when the dose is titrated slowly, starting at 2.5 milligrams. Jumping directly to higher doses, whether it's 5 milligrams or 7.5 milligrams, really does increase the likelihood of nausea and other stomach-related side effects. Long-term side effect profiles are comparable between the two medications, but some clinics observe that terzepatide's dual mechanism with the GIP and GLP-1 might actually cause more initial stomach discomfort in certain patients. So when it comes down to it, what are patient preferences? So again, it's a little bit mixed. Some patients prefer staying on semaglutide because it really helps curb their hunger and controls cravings better, even if terzepatide provides stronger weight loss. And then others favor terzepatide due to its stronger results just in weight loss alone and overall improvements in metabolic health if it's needed, especially once they reach those higher doses. Thanks again for listening to the Peptide Podcast. We love having you as part of our community. And if you love this podcast, please share it with your friends and family on social media. Have a very happy, healthy week.